this is Pastor Joel Wolf, and we want to welcome you here today to Kingdom Kids Parenting Moment. Today, we're going to talk about how to cultivate faith in your children. I think this is one of my favorite topics. I keep saying that. <laughs> I said that about the last one and the last one and the last one. I love to parent. I love cultivating things in our children. I love that whole process of taking a very empty slate that's handed to you at birth and bringing them into just a mighty, strong adulthood. And uh, this is a really fun one for me, cultivating faith in your child. So I think you have something for us here. What do you got? So in Deuteronomy 6, you know, we're to, uh, it instru instructs us as parents to impress into our children the laws and the ways of God to, to tell them when we're coming, when we're going, when we're sitting down, when we're standing. And so really what I would like to get across today is just to make sure that we're not just talking, make sure we don't just have talking points because we don't want to breed religion. We want a deep richness in their lives for them to draw from because a lot of times, you know, um, they're not really going to understand a lot, but as they grow and they can pull the scripture that you sewed into them, they're going to do a lot better in life. They're going to have a lot more success if you uh, can impart into them. Absolutely. You know, we do everything we can around here as a church for your child's Christian education, and it's kind of more of the... Um, formal maybe or you know as much as we could possibly do in an hour and a half on a Sunday morning once a week you have them all the rest of the time and you are truly their primary teacher uh, as far as the Lord is concerned so what would be your first practical step for helping these parents uh, increase how much they are inputting into their children uh, yeah, teach teach your children to read the Bible every day. Let them see you reading the Bible every day. You know, at first I used to try to find a time uh, to read my Bible when they weren't around, and, and sometimes I do that. But then one day, one of my kids started waking up early, and he kept seeing me read my Bible. And so then he started just reading his Bible every day, and, and we were reading already together. But he he could he was just learning to read, and so he thought, oh, I can do this. I can do this on my own. He took it upon himself to do it. So there's those things, and and when they're really little, you know, they're they're not going to understand a lot of the depthness, but they'll understand the stories. They'll be able to memorize the stories, and that kind of builds the framework to kind of keep adding and keep adding as they get bigger. So I did not homeschool, uh, so I had a different schedule than the homeschoolers and uh, that kind of thing, but we developed at our household uh, every morning before uh, before school, you know, and, and for some of you and some of us and my, you know, I included because there was a time frame when this was true of us where we would sleep as long as we could and then get up and hurry and fight, rah, get down there and get your eight, five, blah, you know, and oh boy, it was just not fun. So I started backing that time up and realizing that if, if we got up a little bit earlier, we wouldn't have the stress. And uh, we learned the discipline of waking up. And I never, you know, they didn't really realize, but I was setting those alarm clocks in their, in their rooms with enough time for us to be able to actually read the word. Mm -hmm. So the way it happened at our house, and this worked really well, especially once they got into school, and actually the ones that weren't in school would join us because they would, some of them were early risers. But what we would do is we would get up, we would get dressed, we would have breakfast and then we would all snuggle up around on the heater. We had a heater vent and a blanket, a really fun Mickey Mouse blanket and pillows and kind of kept the room a little bit dark and we all met there. We all piled underneath the blanket so they were everybody was cozy, everybody was comfy and I would read and we would start in Genesis and we plowed and we got so far and we would talk about the stories and I would read to them and it was some of the most precious times. And you can do this. You really can do this. You can make a Bible reading time. And then we also did, as the kids got older in the summertime, you know that reading reading during the summer? Mm -hmm. I would assign them the book of Acts or something like that and they would have to read and write a paragraph about what they read, either it's a section or a chapter. Mm -hmm. And this was really fun. Then we'd have, we would have, um, uh, we would give them prizes afterwards and, and that kind of thing if they completed it. Uh, I'd even pay them. I'd even put money on the deal, put money on the line. Uh, but I found their little notebooks. Mm -hmm. I found their little notebooks and I was reading them and I, my heart was just so enriched with their sweet little printing handwriting about Paul or about Silas or something like that, things that God did. 
So those are a couple of really good ideas for you practically. And, uh, and I, I do want to say one thing. You know, there may be days where you're on it and you sat down and you gave the most beautiful thing ever, ever. And there may be days where you're running out the door telling the kids a scripture <laughs> as you're getting into the car. Just however you do it, just get scripture into them as much as you can. And, and take, you know, even in those little moments, even if it's just with one kid here in the morning and maybe you catch another kid at night, but but just be purposeful in, in getting scripture into your children. Absolutely. So what's another uh, practical tip? Well, you know, kind of to add on to that one, once they do start to grow and they do start to build kind of a, a bigger worldview, you can add in the history uh, during the, the biblical times and, and the culture. Because once you add in those things, it just brings more of a richness and an understanding. So that's, that's kind of, you know, kind of taking that to the next level. But other things you can do is have prayer and worship nights. Now, uh, my family, we're not big singers. We're not big in playing the instruments. A couple of them sit around with the guitar and play it and sing, but they don't actually know how to play the guitar, so there's that. But, um, but you don't need those things because we, you know, our voices to God, he's not looking, we're not, we're not leading the church, okay? We're just leading our little family. And so um, you can do it. You can sing with them. And I would encourage you, you know, there's so many good songs. I feel like we grew up on really good songs. And there's amazing songs now. I love those songs too. But there's a lot of good songs that came out of the 80s, I'd say, that are full of, they're, they're straight scripture. Sure. And in my life, I have noticed that those are the songs that I sing to my kids at night because they're straight out of the Bible, you know, as the deer. It's just songs like that. Um, it also brings a richness Absolutely. to them. So when we were raising our kids, it was a big deal to have family devotion nights. A really big deal. So we were like, we gotta get on this train, we're gonna do this, you know. So not only were we doing kind of things along the way, you know, moments, moment to moment or whatever, but then we decided, okay, every Tuesday night we're gonna have this family night. And I'm gonna tell you, we were the pastors of the of the church and we were preaching this. Those were some of the hardest <laughs> times of our family life. It was hilarious. Never failed. One kid would be in a pro, uh, just a twit about something, or something would happen, or we would. Uh, my we are musical, so my husband would get out the guitar and we would sing together. We were teaching them how to harmonize, and everybody would be laughing and cracking up. And you know, for a while, I was like, No, everybody sits down. Listen to Jesus. Raise your hands and pray. And it, it was like, Oh, we don't want to do this anymore. And the kids were like, No, don't make us. So we ended up having fun and in the midst of it, showing them God. And that was really fun too. So I really want to kind of loosen the reins a little bit yes. in your world that um, just to make it purposeful, don't just get in the rut of life. Come home exhausted. Take off your shoes. Get you know. Get the homework done. Get the dinner on the table. And blah, 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 bang out the the ruts of life. But throw in every once in a while, once a week. Okay, people, we're not going to watch TV. Oh, <laughs> now I just stepped in. It. <laughs> yeah. You do not have to watch TV every night. You do not have to watch those shows. They, those shows are not. I am a TV buster. <laughs> I don't like TV. Just don't turn it on one night and have some game night some fun night and maybe have a worship night. Mm -hmm. Put on some of those kids kids songs that actually have actions to them or some mm -hmm. dancing and just have a ball. But do it purposefully for instilling the goodness of God into your kids' lives. I so agree because you know, it, it, that's where the term is sacrifice of praise. That's that's when real beauty can come out. It's no, you're not really up for it, but you do it. You do what's right. And so the last thing that I wanted to talk about is um, imparting your own personal journey to your children. Tell your children what the Lord has done for you. Uh, have them be aware of why do you believe what you believe? What led you to give your life to the Lord? What are some ways that he brought you through? Well, what are some, have your friends or your family talk to your children? Tell your children your personal victories in the Lord so that it uh, it's just not some far off God, but he's right here with us, walking this journey out with us. Amen, that's so awesome. 
All right, Jerry, this has been wonderful. Let's just, uh, let's pray right now about all of these families and uh, how you will be able to take even one little thing, make one little adjustment in your family towards instilling faith into their souls. Would you go ahead and lead us in Okay, that? I'll do it. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, I just pray right now over every single little family unit that's watching this. Lord God, I pray for the mamas, for the daddies, for the kids, for single parents, Lord God. I pray right now that your Holy Spirit is just going to begin to saturate and permeate every single household, Lord. And Lord, I ask you right now that you will give these parents ideas and ways to draw their children's hearts to you in Jesus' name. Once again, you are the heroes, and uh, today's society is uh, just excited to see your kids come and uh, bring their contribution, and you are the ones that are riding on their souls, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your hard work today. You're awesome. We'll see you again.